In this episode, we'll take a look at the LUT 7S monitor from Feel World. It's a 7-inch HDMI and SDI monitor. little background before we get started. I was looking for a seven inch monitor for my live streams. Over on my other channel that is in support of people that have signed up for my courses online, we do a weekly live stream. And I wanted a confidence monitor I could put up near the camera and be able to make sure that I was getting what I needed, both in terms of video and sound. So this is connected to my Blackmagic A10 Mini Pro, just so you understand where I'm coming from on this. Now, I do also corporate video when there's not a pandemic, so I have some opinions from that perspective as well. First of all, it's a seven inch IPS touchscreen monitor with 323 pixels per inch, and the resolution is 1920 by 1200. Now, because it is an IPS monitor, you can be off axis from the monitor and still get a very good image. Again, as a touchscreen, all of the menus are accessed on the touchscreen, or there are three shortcut buttons as well, so you can assign different things to those buttons to quickly turn on and off different settings. Probably the headline feature here is 2200 nits of brightness. So you can actually use this outdoors in the direct sunlight with pretty good results. Definitely better than any other seven inch monitor I've used before. What I appreciate about the marketing material as well is they're not pitching this as HDR because it's not HDR, it's just high brightness. It has both HDMI and 3G SDI inputs and outputs. So you can actually loop the signal out to another monitor beyond this one as well if you need to do that. Now, just to confirm, it does not cross convert. That is to say, you cannot put an HDMI input and then send a signal out via SDI. The SDI input supports up to 1080p, 60 frames per second, and the latency is super low. So you could use this as a focus pulling monitor. Assuming, of course, that your wireless system is very low latency as well, or you're connected directly to the camera. The HDMI input also supports up to 4K DCI at 24 frames per second. UHD at 30 frames per second, or 1080p at 60 frames per second. It's also relatively low latency for an HDMI input. This one's not quite as fast as the SDI input, but it's actually pretty good for HDMI. You can power the monitor a couple different ways. First of all, it has two battery sleds for Sony L-series batteries. And in this case, I used two NPF 970 batteries. And powering the monitor with the brightness turned to max, I was able to get four hours and 10 minutes of powering time. So that's actually more than I expected at 100% output on the monitor. So it does pretty well, of course, if you dial that brightness down. If you're not shooting outside all day long, then you'll get a lot longer. You can also power via a 12 volt DC barrel input. So you can use adapter cables to get battery power from a cine battery, for example, if you do have it on a camera rig with a cine battery. You could also use AC power with an AC adapter. It doesn't come with those, but that's a possibility. Just like we're seeing on a lot of other monitors these days, you actually have a power output at 8.4 volts for powering hybrid style cameras. It doesn't come with any of the adapters or dummy batteries for that, but those are available online. The monitor has all of the focus and exposure tools you should need. False color, vector scopes, RGB parade, zebras, RGB channels, and focus peaking. And if you're shooting anamorphic, it does also de-squeeze both 1.25, 1.33, 1.5, and 2.0. Now the monitor is Rec. 709 calibrated out of the factory, but it also has an SD card slot where you can load LUTs into the monitor so that if your camera doesn't send out an image with a LUT already applied, you can apply it here on the monitor. It comes with a shoe bracket for attaching to your camera rig if you wanna attach it that way, or of course you could use any sort of friction arm or other types of shoe mounts if you prefer to do that. It does have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and volume control on the touch screen, which is really nice. Really useful for my live streams because this is the program monitor in my live stream, which is to say it is at the very end of the signal chain. I've got the camera, I've got the microphone connected to a mixer into the camera. That all comes into the A10 Mini Pro. And then the output on the A10 Mini Pro goes to this monitor. That way I can make sure exactly what's being streamed out onto the internet, both in terms of sound and video. Comes in at 460 grams in terms of its weight, and it is 27 millimeters thick. Again, the screen is a seven inch screen. At the time of this review, the LUT 7S comes in at $369 US, and there is also a version that is HDMI only called the LUT 7. That comes in at $249 US, so pretty budget price for what you're getting. 
Oftentimes in these budget monitors, you're not getting a lot of the exposure tools. You'll usually get false color, but you generally will not get things like waveforms or RGB parades or vector scopes, which I find really, really helpful. Now, there are a few cons. Number one, there is no battery status meter. And this is really important when you're powering with the Sony L-series batteries. Unless those batteries have their own meters on them built into the battery, you don't know when you're gonna be out of power. So that's a little bit of a con. It'd be really nice to see them add a battery meter. Now, while we demonstrated that you could use the screen outdoors in direct sunlight without a problem, it is still somewhat reflective. So while it's bright enough to overpower the ambient light outdoors in the direct sunlight, it is a little bit reflective, still usable, but it was a little bit challenging to work with at times. And then finally, the build quality is 100% plastic from what I can tell, except for the screw taps for attaching things with the quarter 20. So if it went down hard against the ground, I'm pretty sure it's gonna sustain some damage. So overall, there's a look at the LUT 7S from FieldWorld. Hope that was helpful for you. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave those down below. And if you've not already subscribed, make sure you do that. And we'll be sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk to you soon. Bye.